Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Livestream Tuesday. I was just thinking whether I shocked you there by coming in with that rather exuberant hello, but uh, thank you as well for uh, the message from Susan and Dennis, who made me question what day it was. I was pretty sure it was Tuesday and... They said, yeah, hope you ha have a great Saturday. <laughs> so kind of threw me off, but it is definitely Tuesday night. And I did click on the correct intro and that was Tuesday. So uh, I was questioning it after I'd done it. Anyway, I just want to say that at the beginning of the live stream, I did click on the advert button to see what happened because I get this blue box that comes up that says, you know, uh, doing an advert now would be really good, apparently. So I clicked on that to see what happened on my side of things and absolutely nothing happens. I don't get to see an advert or anything. So I think it's just on the other side of the stream. I'm not sure how long the advert stays for whether you can skip it or not but that's something that I did at the beginning because I'm very much in the process of just testing out this adverts thing and seeing what happens I might do something in the future maybe next month we can do four weeks of experimenting with the adverts see what happens and then if we don't mind it then we can keep it and if we do mind it then we can go back to doing things how they were done before and this is just following the meeting that I had with the YouTube partner person who you have a meeting with, they talk to you about your channel, but they very much are now pushing the mid-roll ads, which is something that they want to put on uh, my videos, but I think just across YouTube. So yeah, we will see what happens in the future with that. Anyway, let me get you guys up on screen and see who is in the house tonight. We have uh, Robert, Tom, Paul, Tammy, uh, Bob went through there as well. Um, Mar Deborah and uh, uh, Pamela, Fred, I can see uh, Lucy as well. Um, I think I missed out a few of those as they went through a bit too quickly. But uh, hello to you guys, Vince in there, Tammy as well, uh, Mimi. And I will get the names of my patrons up on screen. It's moving too quickly for me to mention everybody. But hello, thank you for joining me tonight. And here we go. First click, it worked straight through with the sponsored by the Wings of Pegasus patrons. So that is a good sign saying that it worked. I'm going to check in a second the cover video that we are going to be taking a look at later tonight because this was the winner of the poll in the last live stream. And I believe it was between Lay It On The Line and this song. Uh, still haven't found what I'm looking for. So I'm going to test that that's working because it didn't work in the last live stream. But I'm going to click on it in a second. But anyway, yeah, big shout out to my patrons who make this all possible in the first place. You know who you are and they reside over at patreon.com forward slash wings of Pegasus. So yeah, just the foundation of everything that I do, as I always say. So let me, I was going to say get everything up on screen, but I know something that I haven't done yet is update the likes goal, which is going to be 340 tonight. So let's get that up on screen because uh, I just typed it in there while I was talking, uh, multitasking. So 340 is what we are aiming for tonight. And if you can hit that thumbs up, as you come through the door, that would be fantastic in order to get us closer to that target. If we do hit that target, we have a pick roulette next week. And it's always the week after we have the pick roulette because obviously we've got to hit the target first. We will be having a pick roulette tonight because we hit the target last week. So if you tuned in last week and then entered it at the end of the live stream, your name will be on that wheel. We'll be having one of those later on tonight. Now, the vote tonight, because we've got the cover video already sorted and we usually have a poll going at the top of that live chat room tonight. It's going to be a vote for the Phil Tunes and we've got the four of the old Phil Tunes up there. I can see at the moment the bassist audition is the one that has 33% of the vote and 25% of the vote would be even. So it's... 8% higher than the other, I was going to say cartoons, but Phil tunes, uh, as you guys call them. <laughs> so have a vote on that if you do know which of the cartoons are the cartoons. If you, if you don't know all the Phil tunes, 
Uh, if you don't know which is which, it does click on whatever you like the sound of, but we'll have, be having a look at that a little bit later on. So let's get the donations tab up on screen as well, even though I do always say that you don't have to donate. Just watching is fantastic, but there are some people who can't stop themselves from donating. So uh, for those people, the percentages are up on screen between 35 and 45% goes to YouTube through the super chat window and between three and 5% goes to PayPal through the PayPal link. And you can find that in the description below, but you know, just commenting, introducing yourself. That's great in the live chat room, especially on the live streams. So then we all get to know each other. And I mean, commenting on the analysis videos as well is great. Maybe hitting a thumbs up uh, is all much appreciated because it helps this channel to grow. And for these live streams, they get out there when there are some thumbs up added to the live streams. So thank you guys for all of your support on the live streams and in this live setting. So we did have a donation before we went live and I think that was Paul. It's now uh, disappeared, but I was going to say it was the usual suspect, Paul, because uh, that's what he wrote in the comment. And here it was. It was for five dollars. So thank you for that, Paul. And the message was usual suspect says, please spike those likes all y'all. Let's have some fun tonight. OSK, which stands for Orlando Sidekick. And I'm just going to say OSK from now on rather than saying Orlando Sidekick and it not saying that and me confusing myself like I did in the last live stream. So we have, I mean, for tonight, we have the fill tune that we're voting on at the moment. We're going to be having that cover video. We're probably going to have a jam at the end or a fill jam. I mean, anything that we do now is just having fill put in front of it. And that's its official name now. So the fill jam will happen at the end of the live stream, probably. And we'll see what we've got time for. But it feels like tonight's live stream is going to be a little bit free form, uh, maybe not so well planned as the other uh, live streams. I don't know why it feels like that because I'm just doing everything as I normally do, but it just feels like it's a little bit more free form. And I mean, a quick weather update for the UK. We've had uh, freezing temperatures. I think at the moment outside is minus six. So Again, really cold. I mean, fortunately, not cold in here, which is uh, the bonus of uh, doing uh, these live streams and the videos in this room. Uh, I mean, a lot better for the guitars as well. It means that they're not going down to below freezing and then warming up again and then freezing again. And yeah, very bad for guitars. All of that you know, contracting and expanding that goes on with just wood in general, but especially with guitars. So yeah, a lot better to be in this nice, uh, evenly warmed space rather than, yeah, being in an outside studio, for example. But minus six today, I think it was minus seven, or maybe minus nine yesterday, I don't know. But it's getting so cold that water is now freezing. And you might think, well, obviously, but I think previously when we had freezing temperatures, it then went back to around freezing, maybe a degree or two above. So the, the water wasn't cold enough or wasn't cold long enough to freeze. Whereas today I've even seen icicles, uh, you know, hanging from things. Is that the right word for them? But yes, yeah, so water that was dripping, but is now so cold that it's frozen and seen puddles that are frozen to ice. So if you wanted a very short skate and you got some ice skates, uh, then you could go for a very short skate on a puddle, but it's not quite at the point of you know, freezing the River Thames. Uh, it's not got that far, uh, but I'm sure that the water is very cold indeed. So yeah, really cold temperatures again here in the UK. The other thing to mention is if I descend into darkness during this live stream, it's because the batteries have run out on my lights. I don't know why, but they're only 40% charged when I check them. And I have some other lights that, I mean, I always rotate the lights. So have one set charging while I'm using the other set, but then the other set are at 40% as well. So I'm hoping that the 40% is going to last until the end of the live stream. Fingers crossed it will. And at the moment I am, I do believe, normally lit so you can see me as the lighting is in this room rather than the camera turning everything dark. So that was amazing. 
my brain has taken the K from dark and put it in the first word of the sentence, like turning. I said turking. Well, I was going to say that. So my brain already knows what I'm going to say. This is the thing that I, I don't get about sometimes when I'm speaking and my brain takes a letter from a word in the future and brings it to the beginning of the word. But that was right at the end of the sentence. So even I didn't know, I suppose I've already thought about what I'm going to say and my brain has predicted the words I'm going to need in order to say that and takes the K <laughs> and moves it all the way to the beginning. So yeah, amazing that, you know, there must be so much more we can do with our brains. If it can move letters around like that before you even know the word that you need, but your brain already knows it somehow and brings it forward. So yeah, that maybe I'm using all of my brain there for the split second and it's doing something very fancy. If only I could harness that ability to make it more useful rather than just to confuse me when I'm talking uh, on the live streams. So anyway, yeah, going back to uh, cold temperatures we were talking about, I can't even remember. And uh, that's thrown me uh, out. Oh yeah, no, lighting. I was saying about um, being dark. <laughs> so yeah, if we do go dark, then that's why. But yeah, it seems like everything is normally lit at the moment. I did actually make this window that I have in front of me, which is just a kind of LibreOffice document, like a Word document that just has a white page on it. I've made that bigger so that I've got more lighting from the front and I don't think that has too much to do with it but I think it helps it from not going totally dark and um, but if the lights start to run out of battery then we will be going dark. Um, it sounds like some kind of movie or MI5 thing that we're going to be going dark. I think that means, I'm not even sure what it means, but it means when you are maybe I don't know, doing something in secret or so people can't see you or going dark might be when you can't be tracked. Maybe it's something to do with going on the internet um, and yeah, not being tracked on the internet. I don't know. My brain is trying to give me the information, but I think I don't actually know it. It's just a hint of something that I've heard in movies before. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's get the lycometer up on screen because I could see in that live chat room, uh, I think it's gone now, somebody was saying about where we were and perfect timing, 200 likes, which means we're looking for 140. So I lucked out there with the calculations. Normally, it's a lot more difficult for me to figure it out, but 139, we are now looking for. If you haven't hit that thumbs up, it'd be much appreciated if you could do that. Quick mention of the merch because we had a donation from Paul and we usually have a plug of the mug when Paul or Orlando donates. So here we have it. This is the Spike the Likes mug and this is the official Wings of Pegasus live stream Tuesday mug. So you don't want to mix it up, mix it up with your Saturday mug uh, because, yeah, there's, uh, I mean, something that could go seriously wrong. If you were to actually drink out of this mug on Tuesday, it would mess everything up. But maybe the drink tastes different out of the different mugs, depending on which days you drink out of them. Of course they don't. If you just want one mug for all the live streams, that's absolutely fine. In order to get your hands on one of those, click on the tray underneath this video. If you have that, that has the merchandise, the wings, Pegasus hoodies, the t-shirt caps, all of that cool stuff. But if you don't have one of those underneath this video, there's a spring.com link or spring.com store link in the description below. So you can click on that. I'm sure you guys know what I mean. Uh, usually the letters are in blue. You click on that, it'll take you through to the store and you'll be able to find all of the merch that way and get your hands on a mug if you want to. Put your favorite beverage in a mug or a tumbler. And just saying about the tumblers, thank you guys for ordering those glow in the dark tumblers, the limited edition ones uh, that Carla uh, takes care of. So I have seen some of those are coming through um, Thank you guys for ordering those and hopefully 
when they arrive, we'll be able to get some pictures of those and I can share them here on the live streams. If you guys want to uh, head over to the Wings of Pegasus supporters group over on Facebook, then you can upload pictures there and then they will make their way to me as if by magic, but not really by magic. I do get linked to them uh, by, yes, Laura and, and Vince and uh, Carla, Carla links me to pictures as well. Mentioning Carla, thank you guys for the... Uh, moderating that you do Carla and the moderators I was going to include Carla in that because we have Carla in there Susan and Dennis and Neil and Laurie uh, so thank you guys for moderating just in the past now and in the future for dedicating your time it is massively appreciated and we might be able to see uh, Susan and Dennis going through momentarily um, and this is something about the word momentarily, just reminded myself that and Susan knows and I missed them as they went through because um, I was going to say about momentarily means or I believe it means and I'm pretty sure I'm right in a moment. So when you're looking at something uh, momentarily, it means it's going to be there, but then it's going to go away. But I think some people here, I don't know whether it's the same in other countries, but here in the UK, people use the word momentarily when what they mean is imminently. So when something's about to appear, you're going to, you know, you and you know it's about to appear, you say, we're going to see uh, Susan and Dennis's comment imminently, which means it's going to happen very soon. We're just about to see it. But seeing something momentarily means that it's there and then it's gone. Whereas seeing something and it's imminent means you're about to see it and it could last you know it could stay there for a long time or it could disappear but that's something that I've noticed people are getting confused as to what imminently and momentarily I mean because I mean I've seen multiple people say and it might just be a UK thing where they say and we're just waiting for them to arrive they will be here momentarily but that doesn't mean that they're arriving. That means that they're going to go, hello, and then they're going to go away again. But what they mean is they're arriving to give a talk about something. So anyway, I'm not sure. And uh, yeah, <laughs> a bit of a English lesson tonight. I'm pretty sure that what I'm saying is true, that those are the definitions. And uh, if you type it into Google or check the you know, Oxford English Dictionary that imminently and momentarily mean different things so anyway uh, I'm having a look into the live chat room to see if uh, oh Kim says uh, momentarily versus imminently can they be used interchangeably thoughts uh, so that's what I'm saying I think uh, momentarily imminent so yeah I think it's maybe I mean, this is something that changes from one country to the next, or maybe it's an American English where it's been changed to mean the same thing. But I know, I know for a fact that the original English, those mean different things that imminently, yeah, as I've already explained. So I did get a B, I think, in English language or English literature. So I knew a little bit about English at school, but <laughs> maybe that's all left me. Maybe if somebody has the uh, possibility or ability to type it into the internet and find the definition for imminently and momentarily, maybe they can copy and paste it into the live chat room. And um, oh, we see M. Stewart says imminent means soon. So that's exactly what I think it is, um, or the definition of it. So yeah, maybe somebody can post the definition and then let me know uh, of those two words. Let me know that in the live chat room. Anyway, getting back into the donations, I'm not sure. Oh, I just reminded me myself of that randomly. So it wasn't even in a donation or a comment or a question. So yeah, apologies about that. But I mean, if we are learning things, that is great. <laughs> it's I mean, hopefully we learn things in the live streams. Usually it's about music, but sometimes about yeah diet and exercise and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it just, you know, subjects that I have studied in the past. But let's move into the donations that came in after Paul. Uh, thank you for that, Paul. And it might have been Ron. 
but I'm just going to refresh my page to make sure that none of them uh, fell between the gaps between being offline and then going offline. And uh, Bonnie says they are semantically related, Wings of Pegasus. Uh, so thank you for that. And uh, oh, Chanter of the North says imminent, about to happen. They were in it. Yeah, they were in imminent danger. That, that's, a, that's something that I think is, is used quite a lot. And Cindy says, momentarily is a very short time. Imminently means soon. They are different. You are correct. Wings of Pegasus. So I still know English. So that is great. <laughs> so, so I am right. Oh, another big one has just popped into my head in terms of English and definitions. So a lot of people say comprised of and or hang on, comprised of and comprising of. And I think comprising means, con um, I was going to say consisting of, but uh, I need to get the right definition for this, but you've got something that, oh, it's made up of. So um, comprising different Elements uh, is basically what you would say in a sentence, or at least that's what I think you should say. So um, the uh, the recipe <laughs> uh, comprised different. <laughs> now I'm saying it, it sounds a bit wrong, but I think it's right. Comprised, and then you have whatever the recipe comprised of. <laughs> comprised means consisting of. So there's no of. So when I said it the second time, that's what people say. They put of after something that means, um, you know, consisting of. Um, so it means that you're saying of, of. And I don't know whether, uh, I don't know whether this is going to ruin my internet by, or trying to type something in. Hopefully it's a Google search. So, um, Yes, I was right. So uh, comprising, uh, I don't even have to press enter. It's given me the definition consist of, be made up of. So of is part of the definition of the word. So it means that if you say uh, comprising of, it means that you've said consisting of of. So people say it and put of after it, but that's not correct. You're actually saying of twice. But I think it's because maybe, um, yeah, people don't realize that uh, yeah, comprising means consists of. So anyway, that was another thing. There was another one that my, my brain is trying to remind me of. Off of. There you go. There's another thing that lots of people say and is you know, technically incorrect in English because you can either say from. Um, you know, he jumped from the bridge. You can't jump off of a bridge. I mean, not technically in English. You can jump off a bridge, but you can't jump off of a bridge because once you've jumped off something, you've already done the action. You don't need the of after that. So that's something that I think a lot of people are using, and I've seen it all over the place, that putting an of after off isn't required. Uh, you can use just off by itself, or you can use from. Yeah, so but, but I think maybe I don't know whether that's the same in the USA where lots of people say off of um, because to me it just sounds funny. <laughs> yeah, you know, to say that, oh, I'm just going to uh, log log off offline because if you're going offline, why aren't people, you know, why don't you say off offline? Because that's another practical example of it. Why it's not required because you're off line, you're, you're off the line. So you're or you're logging out from the internet or you're logging out off the internet, not off of the internet. Hopefully this is making sense. I don't know whether it is because I think a lot of people um, is <laughs> a lot of people is, you know, throwing in some more bad English. Another thing that we say here is using them as you know a collective term for you know, even, you know, the singular version. I'm not just, I'm not going to get into this too deeply, but yeah, we use a plural for, you know, not only collective, but now a singular term. So yeah, it, it's uh, a bit weird how the English changes, but yeah, these kind of things do sound a little bit weird to me when I hear something that I think, oh, actually, it's like when I say sometimes for a, a joke that, you know, 
Some people can do something to an excellent standard, but very few people get very excellent at it. Uh, because of course you can't be very excellent at it. Excellence the top you can't be then very excellent, but that's why I say it because it sounds funny to me because I know the definition <laughs> of excellent um, But yeah something I just like to throw in for a bit of fun. So anyway Let's get back to the live stream and stop the I mean this is the first time they've actually spoken about English so uh, Hopefully it's relatively interesting, but uh, thank you, Ron, for that donation of $5. And the message was, hello, everyone, a rock. So everyone say hello to Ron. And uh, Jennifer then donated $7. Thank you for that, Jennifer. And uh, that message uh, was removed. Uh, but thank you for the donation. David donated $5 as well. Thank you for that, David. And the message was, hi, Phil and wingers. Do you have a favorite blues artists? Uh, Wow, that was a, a quite a good example there of something that I mentioned about a plural for a singular. And there we have it, a favorite blues artists. So, um, I mean, it's, it's difficult because, I mean, a lot of, I don't know whether people would describe uh, Jimi Hendrix really as a, a blues guitarist or a, a blues artist, but certainly he was massively inspired by the blues. Um... I would say, I mean, Gary Moore, definitely one of those I listened to a lot when I was growing up. Um, Eric Clapton, uh, Steve Ray Vaughan, of course, as well. Throw him in there. And yeah, I, th I think pretty much I would say, you know, rather than going kind of really old time with it, I, I didn't really listen to a lot of old time blues, you know, maybe to, uh, you know, artists before you know, 60s, 70s, 80s. So, yeah, I, I didn't really get into, you know, B.B. King when I, when I was young, listening to, you know, blues artists, Chuck Berry, um, those kind of guys. I, I actually, having said that, I mean, Chuck Berry is just some somebody that you, you know already. I know that I listen to Johnny B. Good. So it would be, yeah, not right for me to say, oh, that maybe I wasn't into him. I didn't listen to a lot of his music, but it was unavoidable to hear little bits, and I think that's probably the same uh, with B.B. King. Uh, but the guys whose music I knew a lot of definitely would have been, yeah, Clapton, Moore, and Jimi Hendrix. Um, and then to a lesser extent, when I was learning to play Steve Ray Vaughan, I, did, I didn't listen to a lot of his music, but just had maybe two or three tracks in my playlist that I'd be listening to. So, yeah, so there's... um what, three or four or, or five? I don't know how many I named there. But yeah, that's kind of the, the general kind of area and artists that I, I was listening to. Thank you for that, David. And Diane has donated $10 as well. Thank you for that. And the message is, in North America, you will say someone will be here momentarily. Uh, so thank you for that, Diane. So yeah, maybe um, it means something else there. But I mean, interestingly, because... The language is English. It, it comes from the form that we speak here. And then it kind of gets lost in translation. <laughs> Maybe people are trying to remember it. And, you know, back in the day, it took a very long time to go from <laughs> England over or, or the UK over to the USA and maybe things kind of got changed in that way and maybe they didn't return to England so then things kind of took on their own meaning and maybe momentarily has changed its meaning or at least people perceive it to mean something different to um, what it actually does in kind of old English or just the English that we use here it hasn't really changed uh, all that much but I think this is something that just happens in the modern day with you know OMG and all these different things with the invention of the internet you know, you can abbreviate and people know what you mean and, you know, lol, you know, laugh out loud, all these different things. So, yeah, the language definitely has uh, changed. But I wouldn't say changed. It's had a lot of branches that have just grown off the original language. Uh, so thank you for that, Diane. Dan uh, donated five dollars. Thank you for that, Dan. And the message is we want more grammar. Uh, so thank you for that, Dan. <laughs> and oh, I can see on the screen that I've just gone dark <laughs> so yeah not uh, undercover it's just uh, gone dark on the screen i'm gonna do this and see if we come back to the light and we have done so i'm just looking at the screen to see if it goes dark again but i think we are okay so yeah this is the other thing that you can now get apps that automatically make your grammar 
correct so that um, I mean I think kids might use this when they type up something uh, I think it's called Grammarly and yeah you, you type something up and it corrects it all makes it correct and makes it sound you know really good but the only problem with that is say that you're applying for a job and you're not particularly good at English but that is something that's important to the job you might get the job on the fact that you sound like you know what you're talking about and that you've got you know great grammar and all that kind of stuff but then when you turn up to the I was going to say audition, but uh, as uh, me uh, being a musician, thinking in those terms. But once you turn up to the job interview and they realize that you're using incorrect grammar, then they'll think, well, but how come you wrote this? And they'll they have to say, oh, I didn't write that. I just put that through the app that then makes it all correct. And then obviously they'll say, well, OK, you can't get the job then because actually having correct grammar is really important and you need to be able to do it on the fly and not always run it through an app first, um, especially kind of talking. You know, if you are uh, saying things you know, like momentarily, but then you mean imminently and it's saying, you know, I'm just going to uh, print off of this piece of paper. That's another thing. Um, I'm just going to print off this document. Don't you mean print off of this document? Well, no, that doesn't make sense. Uh, but, you know, again, just proving the point that you putting of after off doesn't make sense. So when people use it, <laughs> that's why it just sounds really weird to me in any context. If somebody is jumping off of a, a bridge, it still just sounds weird. Anyway, let's get back into it. I think we just have to deal with uh, it's not my lights that are going dark. It's the camera that's making everything kind of high contrast. And now I've got jet black hair and a black t-shirt and hoodie so we're just gonna have to uh, deal with it anyway uh oh 38 minutes past midnight we have been talking for a while about the language but uh thank you for those donations in the super chat window i know that there have been some in the paypal window as well kim donated right at the end of the last live stream asking about Un unwanted stranger the uh, song that I sometimes play that's one of my songs that you guys can get at wingsofpegasus.com forward slash music if you want to head over there and let me just give a quick plug of the website that's where you can find my music but um, I Wanted Stranger is over there and the question was um, wondering if there's a story behind the song and I have mentioned this before that the story behind the song wasn't my story but somebody that was in the band at the time and I'm not sure that it could be something that, yeah, I can share the story behind the song without their permission first. So I can't really talk about that. But uh, so, but yes, there is a story behind the song. So thank you for that, Kim. I did say that I'd answer that at the beginning. Well, in the next live stream, uh, it's not exactly at the beginning of the live stream, uh, but hopefully um, that is OK. And I'm just going to just skip through because I got some uh, Tumblr donation, not donations, but Tumblr uh, payments there aren't donations, but uh, they come through PayPal. So again, uh, thank you guys for buying the tumblers. The, these are the limited edition glow in the dark ones that are separate to the ones on spring.com. You can still get the tumblers from spring.com, but these were the special ones that glow in the dark. So you can uh, see them when you're watching a movie or something like that. So Nicole donated 10 pounds and 11 pence. Thank you for that, Nicole. And the message is, hi, Phil, a donation to support. I choose to continue because I need Wings of Pegasus not be alone but all together in love of music of course rock uh, so thank you for that nicole and uh just gonna scroll to the next one which is here and it's tammy so thank you oh no it's not it's terry who has donated 12 pounds and 81 pence so thank you for that i think the problem is that my, my microphone's a little bit in the way so i'll just move it slightly off to the side uh, so thank you for this donation and oh it's a tumblr payment so thank you for that terry now this is going to be something that if a tumblr payment comes through from paypal while i'm going live i'm going to think that it's um, a donation so not a donation, but thank you, Terry, for uh, purchasing that. I'm going to make sure that I read these before I get into them. And, well, I had a little bit of precog, is it called? Uh, precognition. Because uh, this is a donation from Tammy. So, uh, yeah, I must have known that it happened somehow. A uh, sixth sense. Uh, thank you for this a £10 donation. And the message is, hi, Phil. Which one of your songs was the most difficult for you to write? So, thank you for that. And the question... Just mentioning that precog, 
I think that's something from the movie with Tom Cruise where they could see the future. So that's what I meant by that. And I can't remember. Minority Report. There you go. Amazing. So we've got the name in the movie as well. If you guys get a chance, I suggest you watch that movie. I think it's quite a good one. Uh, Tom Cruise and yet yeah, about predicting the future or knowing the future actually and stopping crimes before they happen. So yeah, check that out if you get a chance. Right. Uh, Tammy. Uh, yeah. Thank you for this. And the most difficult one for me to write. I don't know. It's difficult to think of you know, which one. I mean, probably... I don't know, maybe Percy Johnson took quite a while to, I think, put together. I had the riff and I had uh, the lyrics. I, I knew what I wanted the song to be about. But then in terms of finding, you know, a, a verse and a chorus and a mid late, I didn't have those. I just had a riff and I, I know what I wanted to write the song about. So that's one that took a little bit of time to come along, because once you've got a riff at the beginning that you like, you then have to try and write something that you like as much as the riff. And, you know, that's sometimes really difficult. And, and you get lots of songs like that where you think, oh, the riff's really cool. But then the rest of it is a, a bit of a letdown. So I think it took a long time uh, just purely because anything that I wrote, I would then listen to it again and think, oh, no, it's not as good as the riff. It's not a natural progression into the verse. And then... I just use the riff actually for the chorus. Um, so <laughs> because I like the riff that much, I just had it in the background. And then for the mid late, I think it was just a case of changing the theme of the verse. So yeah, but it did take, I think maybe a few months to write that because musically I wanted it to kind of live up to as much as I like the riff, I wanted to like the rest of it. So yeah, <laughs> that's something that it took a little bit of time to come along, but thank you for that, Tammy. And uh, Geraldine has donated three pounds and ninety pence. Thank you for that, Geraldine. And that's a straight up donation. And Lisa A has donated five pounds. So thank you for that, Lisa A. And that is a straight up donation as well. And oh, Kim has donated ten pounds again with the same question that we're, I said that I'd, I'd answer. So uh, thank you for this, Kim, the £10 donation about uh, the Unwanted Stranger song with the question. So yes, the same uh, answer to that. But thank you again for that donation. But when I do see a donation at the end of a live stream, I do mark it to make sure that I get to answering it at the beginning of the next live stream. Like I said, not really the beginning, but quarter to one here in the morning. Uh, thank you as well, Lucy, who has donated $1.99. And the message is, Grammarly is the auto-tune of English. So technically, I, I guess that is correct. That, yeah, you, you can write anything and it will make it uh, sound or it will just make it how it thinks it should be. Or I think with grammar, that it, I mean, it's... I don't think there's any kind of blurred line as, you know, what's right and what's wrong. They're just a set of rules and, and that's as it should be. Um, but I mean, unfortunately, it, it is the same about music, but the opposite way that there are no rules or set way of, of singing or, or playing an instrument. There are accepted ways that people like the sound of. But even within that, you can still you know, do things how you want to do them. So it's very difficult because auto-tune, I think, is making something that should be freeform into something where there are rules. I mean, in grammar, there are rules. That's all it's doing is applying the rules. But in music, there are no rules. So when they are applied, such as snapping something to 440 hertz equal temperament, then it starts to sound weird because we know, I mean, I think all of us know intuitively that sound doesn't have rules to it. But if we apply rules to it like auto-tune, it sounds different. It sounds a little bit weird because that's not the way that music works. So, yeah, it is interesting uh, uh, to make that kind of comparison uh, yeah, with kind of language. But then with music, something that is a lot more freeform and doesn't have any rules or... It shouldn't have any rules, even though people are applying them to music and singing and, and playing and yeah, everything like that. So uh, thank you for that uh, donation, Lucy and Kim as well. OK, we've just gone 
past quarter to one in the morning here in the UK. So uh, quickly, Lauren has donated $20. Thank you for that, Lauren. And that is a straight up donation. And actually, that's 20 pounds. Did I just say dollars? I'm not sure. Uh, but thank you for that. Kim donated uh, five pounds um, as well. Thank you for that, Kim. And the message is so or so as I thought you'd forgotten my question from the last live stream and asked it again. I think we need a new question. So here goes. Is there a story behind Don't Cry? Cheers, Kim. Uh, so thank you for that, Kim. And I think I might have answered this before on a live stream, but it's I mean, it's not really a, a direct story behind it. But just a general feeling of uh, people that we do lose who move on. What I think um, a lot of people, yeah, that, that I have known in my life, what they would say, kind of looking back and <laughs> that's it. Don't cry. <laughs> you know, it's um, relatively straightforward, but it, it's not a specific you know, person, for example, uh, that it was written about. It's just more of a kind of a generalization of people that unfortunately with this life thing it is all part of the deal. We have to deal with the death part as well. So uh, thank you for that, Kim. Um, right. What we'll do is we will jump into the cover, which is going to be still haven't found what I'm looking for. And 309 likes so far in tonight's live stream. So if you can hit that thumbs up, it would be much appreciated. We're aiming for 340. So we're looking for 30 more people in that live chat room to hit that thumbs up. If you haven't hit that yet, that would be great. Right. So let's jump into the cover video for tonight. I hope you guys enjoy it and I'll see you guys after a rock.
Hello, Phil here, and thank you so much for watching my cover of Still Haven't Found What I'm Looking For by U2. I hope you enjoyed it. The names that you can see going down the screen here are my patrons who support me and make videos like this possible. So thanks patrons, it's massively appreciated. If you guys want to get involved, head to the website down here. And if I don't see you on Patreon, then check me out on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all the other places. But I hope you enjoy this video and I'll catch you guys at the next one. Rock! And there we have it. That was my version of the U2 classic. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. So, right, I mean, I did notice uh, somebody said about having fluffy hair. And those are back in the days when there was a shampoo that they did here in the UK that was called Thicker Fuller Hair. And, it, I mean, it, it did exactly what it said on the package. And I used that for years. So sometimes, yeah, my, my hair would be kind of really, I mean, especially at the sides. I mean, I've had it kind of <laughs> definitely uh, taken down a little bit. I mean, I wasn't kind of too into the, the really big hair at the sides. Because sometimes the sides would go out more than the top and start to look a little bit weird. But, yeah, it was that shampoo. And then the shampoo got discontinued. And um, I saw that when it did get discontinued, there were loads of messages underneath saying, oh, I can't believe that this shampoo isn't being made anymore. Uh, and actually, it's the only thing that I've used that did make my hair go absolutely crazy sometimes. Um, and then just have to go back to using normal shampoo. And it's the only thing I think a lot of people, I mean, fortunately, I don't think I need to thicken my hair too much, but I know that there were a lot of people commenting who really needed or maybe had naturally thin hair and really needed that product in order to, you know, make make their hair look a bit better and then it will stop being made. So yeah, that's a bit of a nightmare and obviously it's not profitable or they're changing their recipe or I don't know what you call it, uh, their formulation uh, for their yeah, hair shampoo. There was another one that's I think called the same thing, but then people comment underneath saying this isn't the same as it used to be. They've changed it and it now it doesn't work. So yeah, anyway, moving on with tonight's live stream because it's almost five to one here in the morning. We are going to be having a look at some pictures and then we'll jump into the pick roulette. So let's get the background on screen to begin with because we have I think a few pictures to be looking at tonight. Let me navigate my way to them. First of all we have, I mean this could be like Where's Wally that we have here in the UK or Where's Waldo, I think, in the USA uh, in terms of trying to figure out who it is. So from behind, who is this, ladies and gentlemen? I'm not going to give you very long to guess, but this is Vince with his Wings of Pegasus hoodie. And he's at, I think, San Francisco Airport, if I remember correctly. So uh, thank you for sending this one in, Vince. And just for reference, he did turn around and put his hoodie on at one point. So uh, there we have the proof. Uh, thank you, Vince, for uploading that picture. And there was a Zoom call over on the Wings of Pegasus Facebook page. And this is the Wings of Pegasus Supporters Group Facebook page. So not on the Wings of Pegasus page. Um, I hardly use that at all. But the Supporters page, if you want to get involved yourselves, head over to Wings of Pegasus Supporters page over on Facebook. Just type that in and join in. And yeah, you could be part of the calls or see the posts on there. Send in uh, yeah, any merch pics that you might have. So uh, this, and you can see Vince is a part of this Zoom call as well. I think it was actually set up uh, by Vince. So uh, thank you for that. Vince is an admin over on the page. And let me find the list so I can go through the names. If you've got this big on your screen, I'm, I'm sure you'll be able to read the names on there, but I'll take you through them just in case it is too small to see. We have from left to right, and I'm going to go from top to bottom, um, 
from left to right, top to bottom, we have Jen, uh, who's also known as Rocker Girl. We have Vince, of course, and Paula, uh, Evelyn, and then Bob, also known as Grumpy Old Bob, starts the next line underneath. And then we have Sandy, and Amy, and Dawn, and Barbara, and Kevin, and we can see Kevin's got his mug there, and Michael, Marta, Carl, Tom, and Paul, and I think right, yes, I'm just looking at the live chat room to make sure that isn't, that isn't totally obliterating Paul, but I think Paul is, yeah, is visible there on the screen. So, uh, thank you, Vince, for uploading that one, and thank you uh, to Laura and Vince and Carla uh, for linking me to pictures in the past and uh, those kind of pictures because it's great to see what's going on over on the supporters page. As I said, get involved if you want to carry on the conversation over there between the live streams because Bob hosts the after party after the live streams on that page as well. So you can get involved with those. Right. Um, let me just, uh, there, there's a question that I didn't quite see there, um, but it might have said about uh, composing uh, music for, I don't know, I've been asked in the past about composing for movies and this kind of stuff. Um, I haven't composed anything other than, you know, my own music for my own uh, album, my own songs. So no, uh, but I have done demos before. So I haven't written for like movies or projects, but I have written for tracks that then go to other artists uh, that then listen to that might be signed to a major label and the person that I worked with I mean this is going back you know I don't even want to think how long this is going back to but maybe 12 years or 15 years ago something like that I used to yeah do a little bit of kind of demo work I guess it's kind of session work where I'd play a bit of guitar also supply vocals for different tracks and yeah, sometimes just write uh, guitar parts and compose little bits for uh, different songs. And the person that I was working with there was um, working with Universal. Uh, so yeah, it was a major label, but these are just things that, you know, just tiny little projects that at that time I had time to work on. But I haven't written anything like specifically for a movie. Like if somebody said, right, uh, this is the scene and this is the kind of music that we want or we want you to write music for this particular scene so um yeah not in those because i didn't really see the question i'm not sure what it meant but hopefully that kind of answered uh, whatever that question was so let's now jump into the pick roulette and we are just getting to 1 a.m where are we at with it we Definitely had a spike of the likes there somewhere because we are up to 368. So thank you guys for hitting that thumbs up. You can keep on doing that. If you're watching this in the future on catch up, then every thumbs up still helps the channel to grow, get out there a bit more and these live streams to get out there as well. So we will jump into the pick roulette. I am tempted to click on this advert button again to see what happens because some people got the advert last time. Some people didn't get the advert. I don't think I get to see, well, not that I want to see an advert, but I don't think I get to see an advert. I'm going to click on this and then we're going to see what happens just as an experiment for maybe next month. Um, we might have just four weeks of seeing what it's all about, the advert thing, and you know, to see how much it does disrupt the channel. And if it is too much, then we'll go back to doing things how we do things. But I'm going to click on this. And I'm going to see what happens. So we're going to have a countdown from three. So three, two, one, add. And it says ads inserted. And that's just what it says on the screen. So I don't know whether there's going to be an ad on the screen now or maybe you skip the ad and then come back to the live stream I don't know how it works but yeah we'll have to figure it out in the future so anyway let's get into the pick roulette for tonight and we'll jump into it if I can find the right button just double check it definitely is Tuesday night tonight so we're going to jump into Tuesday night's pick roulette and I'll see you guys in a second rock <laughs> Thank you. 
So let's get the wheel up on screen. And there it is. For newcomers, we have the darker segments here, which are the t-shirts. If we land on one of those, we have a t-shirt roulette. And if we land on a name, then you go away with a signed Wings of Pegasus pig. Now, I think there was something about doing two spins. I believe I read that correctly from Carla on the message that she sent to me. So we're going to be spinning this twice. So let's give that one a spin. And it's making a noise this time. So sometimes it makes a noise, sometimes it doesn't make a noise. I'm not sure why it does and why it doesn't, but we have the noise. And I didn't pick a top tip. So I'll do that for the second spin. And I mean, yeah, I'm kind of watching to think, or watching to see if I think I would have picked anybody who it might land on. And we're going to get close to a t-shirt here, I think. It's Marcia, but is it going to be a t-shirt? No, it is Marcia who has gone away with the signed Wings of Pegasus pick. So, uh, congratulations to you. If you can let yourself be known to Carla in the live chat room, that would be much appreciated so she can get everything that she needs from you to send you that signed Wings of Pegasus pick. And it says on my screen, now would be a good time to insert ads. I've, already, I've just done it. So I'm going to close that because uh, I don't want to put in another one. Right, I suppose because I did one, it's now trying to see if I'm going to put another one immediately after one that we've just done. It's not going to happen. Right, so yeah, congratulations Marcia. Uh, commiserations to everybody else. Right, I need a top tip for the next spin. I believe that we're going to be doing another spin. I can't see anybody in the live chat room. So I'm going to pick, I can see on the wheel. I tell you what, let's uh, get it kind of going round, doing its spinning thing again. So, right, we are ready for another spin. And I can see that Marty's in the live chat room. So, congratulations. And just seeing, uh, yes, just about to go through. And she's tagged Carla as well. So, uh, thank you for that, Marcia. Right, oh, I'm just kind of delaying. So, um, oh, Deborah says, top tip, not me. Uh, okay, Cindy, Cindy with an I said, pick me. Okay, right, so, uh, make, a make a name of Cindy's note, or a note of Cindy's name uh, for the top tip. Right, there we go. Let's give the wheel a spin. And see, oh, now it's gone quiet. So yeah, we only got the noise on the on the first, uh, so now it's muted for some reason. But we are waiting to see if Cindy's name appears as the winner for tonight's second pick roulette. Right, let's have a look. We are slowing down, and I can't see. Oh, hang on, here is Cindy's name. This it. This is gonna be. The closest ever! Oh, wow. Actually, I think we might have been closer than that. And it's Pam who's gone away with it. Oh, so yeah, we have been closer than that. Technically, that's two away from the top tip. So, we've been one away, we've been two away, I think we've been one away twice. So, Cindy, commiserations again, almost landed on the top tip. Uh, but. Pam, congratulations to you. You are the winner tonight. So if you can let yourself be known to Carla in the live chat room, that would be much appreciated so that she can get everything that she needs from you to send you that signed Wings of Pegasus pig. So close one for tonight with the top tip. Almost. It's got to happen one day that we land on the top tip in the live stream and in the pick roulette. So right now we are going to be opening the entries for next week's pick roulette because we've hit that pick roulette lights goal at Carla Murray is what you need to type in to tag Carla in your post type I agree and then that's how you get your name on the I'm just waiting to see that go through because normally there's lots of people doing the same thing but my one's probably going to go through first because I did it straight away uh, there we go at Carla Murray, I agree. Do that, and then you will get your name on next week's pick roulette. Right, let's jump into the fill tune. So we'll end the poll to see which one landed 
and uh, this is going to go through quite quickly. It looks like we had uh, the bassist had 34% of the vote. So the bassist audition, that's the Phil Toon we're going to be jumping into. Hopefully, I mean, I think the live stream, the live chat room will be on top of this. So you can keep on entering while we jump into this real life story. And I'll see you guys after. Rock! <laughs> Okay, well thanks for coming down to the audition today. Do you mind if we slag you off behind your back? While we discuss your audition? That's okay, I'll randomly walk in this direction. What the actual heck was that? Okay, let's start with the negative points. Well, his image is laughable and totally unsuitable. He can't keep time. His base looks like he found it in a skip and he was let. Unbelievably, even though he was absolute total guff. He is the best we've seen, and we've been auditioning for a year. So what the ruddy freak shall we do? As much as it pains me to say it, I think we'll have to give him the gig, bite the bullet and get on with it. Ah, this is total guff shine. Hello again, before you tell me your decision, I thought I would say, I want this more than anything in the world. I'll do whatever it takes. Well, I can't believe I'm saying this but, you've got the gig. You are now our new bassist. Holy head guys, thanks a lot. This means the world to me, you will not regret it. Well, straight to business. We have a rehearsal on Wednesday night 7 until 10 before the gig on Saturday. Can't do Wednesday. Um, why not? Me and the missus usually go to the corner shop that evening. Okay, no problem. We'll just move the rehearsal to Thursday. Can't do Thursday. Is there any day at any time before Saturday that you can do? No. Hang on, is the gig this Saturday? Yes, it is this Saturday as I have been telling you for the last three weeks. I can't do it. I'm working this Saturday, and I definitely can't get out of it, for sure. Are you actually having a joke with me? As you have just realized it is this Saturday, I know for a fact you have not called in to see if someone will cover your shift. I didn't think of it like that but now you say it, it makes sense. Well, considering it is a great venue and fantastic opportunity for us as a band. Do you want to call your work just in case? Well I suppose I could actually thinking about it. Well ruddy guffing do it then you freaking bum guff. Hello, it's me. I doubt anyone will, and don't worry if you can't. But will you or anyone else cover my shift on Saturday? So, what did they say? They said they didn't want to cover my shift. It sounded like they were slagging me off and laughing in the background. So it's a dead end. Well at least you got across the importance of getting Saturday night off. Now the problem is, I can't fake illness because they know I want Saturday night off. Ruddy, hell. I seriously cannot believe your incompetence. Okay, give me your phone. Hello, I'm calling on behalf of my guffing idiot of a friend. Yes that's him. He has an important night on Saturday, can he swap his shift? That's great. Thanks for doing that. I'm actually amazed at how easy that was to organize, many thanks. There you are. You now have Saturday off so you can now do the gig. How you could not organize that, is beyond me. Unbelievable. Just thinking about it, actually, I can't do Saturday. What? There. Actual. Frig. Please excuse me. I just have to go outside quickly and shout something. And there we have it. That was a real life story, a Phil Toon, a story from my past, if you're wondering what those uh, cartoons are all about. And it looks like we've gone light again. So. 
I don't know how that works because I've just been sitting here, <laughs> haven't been doing anything, uh, and the lighting has come back on again. Right, it is 11 minutes past one here in the morning, so we've only got a few minutes left. I don't know whether we can do the fill jam or not, or if we do, it's only going to be, what, four or five minutes in length. So maybe we can do it. I mean, if I'm quick and, and stop talking uh, so much, we might be able to squeeze it in. Right. Uh, type I agree, tag Carla Murray in your comments so that uh, you will get your name on next week's pick roulette um, wheel. Pick roulette wheel. I was going to say pick roulette likes wheel, but that's not it. It's because I was looking at the pick roulette likes goal. 340, 390 we are at now. So thank you guys for hitting that thumbs up and continuing to do so. Right, let's have a jump over to... If this is a long backing track, um, the one that we click on, because I'm just going to go to the next one in the list um, that Joe sent me. If this is a long one, we'll probably cut it short because, yeah, it's 12 minutes past one here. But anyway, I might have to move, maybe moving around. I mean, it's still light. I, I don't understand this, this camera and why it goes dark. But anyway, we'll grab the guitar. And right, we've done all of the uh, jazz fusion style backing tracks. So we've got those three out of the way. And uh, we're now uh, getting into the prog, uh, the progressive backing tracks. And I'm just going to click on the first one. And there might be an advert. I do not. Yes, there is an advert. Oh, there's two adverts. Okay, right. Let me sit here and wait for the adverts to finish. And I think... Think. Let me just have a little look. And it just says, uh, oh, this is from Nick uh, Neblo, uh, Neblo, that's N E B L O on YouTube, like the channel. And it just says, a uh, free, epic, uh, psychedelic, progressive, alternative rock with electric guitars, drums, bass effect, and synthesizers uh, for musicians, singers, guitarists. You can improvise your solo. Um, take inspiration from an E minor with change, I measure. Okay, right. So, I mean, it's going to be in E minor because <laughs> we just read that and oh, you can see it in the picture as well. Right, we will jump into this. I think it maybe started to play. I'm not sure whether we heard it or not, but it seems like this is okay to play along to. But it's uh, Nick Neblo on YouTube and it's called Backing Track Prog Rock Instrumental Jam. So we'll have a listen to this and see what we can see. Actually, oh, I can see it's six minutes and 14 seconds. So we might be able to play through this. Let's get a vibe. See if my guitar is even going to be making sound. Ooh, sounds like we're a bit heavy here. I don't think I'm really heavy with my guitar. Got a little bit of galloping in there, cool. Again, as for the mix, I'm not sure. Hopefully you can hear.
guitar's a little bit low, so I can't really hear it too much. But I can hear the backing track, so that's good. Okay, we go a little bit, we go major there for a brief time. That's the first time I noticed that, so <laughs> a bit of a shame. Might be ending it there. Oh no, we're coming back in. I'm assuming that this is going to be the end of it because I know it's only six minutes. Yeah, let me look. Oh, it still says another 15 seconds. But we've got that nice feedback and on the backing track. I'm just gonna let it kind of fade out to nothing. So, anyway, uh, that was the, I mean, that's quite good that we just so happened to have a track coming up that was only six minutes and it takes us to 20 past one here in the morning in the UK. So thank you guys for tuning in to tonight's live stream. I'm going to be live streaming again on Saturday night, of course. Another video coming your way tomorrow night and Friday and Sunday. That's when we do the analysis videos. Um, but yes, thank you everyone for joining me. Thank you moderators as always for doing such a fantastic job. As I always say, stay as safe and as sane as you can in this crazy world in which we live in but uh, have a great rest of the week and i'll see you guys at tomorrow night's video and i'm just putting down my pick because i'm gonna have to do the <laughs> that would have been very awkward trying to hold the pick and then realize that i needed my fingers to do uh, the rock sign off at the end so anyway thank you guys uh, ready and primed for the rock sign off. I'll catch you guys at the next one. Rock! <laughs>